Imagine this, India, a country with one of the largest railway networks in the world and an advanced manufacturing sector capable of building satellites, nuclear reactors, and fighter jets, suddenly needs to import something as simple as train wheels. Not just any wheels, but 39,000 high-speed wheels from China, a country India often views with suspicion. The deal? About $21 million, which is 1.68% higher than what India paid in a previous contract. At first glance, that might sound minor, but in government procurement, even a tiny percentage spike can make ministers, engineers, and auditors raise their eyebrows. Here's the real puzzle. If India can launch satellites into orbit, why can't it manufacture a wheel that's essentially a metal ring on steel tracks? How does something that seems so simple become a national dilemma? This isn't just about trains. It's about geopolitics, industrial capability, and strategy, all rolled into one surprising story. Today, that humble wheel becomes the centerpiece of a high-stakes tale, one that reveals the tension between national pride and practical necessity. So buckle up, because what seems like a small mundane part is actually a window into India's ambitions, vulnerabilities, and the complex realities of modern infrastructure. By the end of the story, you'll see that sometimes the tiniest things carry the biggest weight, literally and politically. To understand why a wheel could become such a big deal, we need to zoom out and look at the scale of India's railways. The Indian railway network stretches over 68,000 kilometers, connecting millions of towns and cities. Every year, it moves more than 8 billion passengers. That's like transporting the entire population of the world once, and then adding a few billion more. But here's the catch. Much of this network is aging rapidly. Many tracks were laid decades ago, bridges are old, signaling systems are outdated, and some train coaches in use today were designed before smartphones even existed. The consequences are serious. In the past five years, more than 100,000 people have died in railway-related accidents, roughly the population of a small city. In 2021 alone, there were over 18,000 railway accidents. At the same time, India's economy is growing, and so is the demand for faster, safer, and cleaner trains. People don't just want trains that move. They want trains that run efficiently, comfortably, and reliably. This combination of aging infrastructure and rising demand creates intense pressure. Modernizing the railways isn't just a bureaucratic goal, it's urgent. And that urgency is exactly why importing train wheels, which might seem like a small detail, suddenly becomes critical. Enter the Vande Bharat Express, India's semi-high-speed train and the crown jewel of the country's modernization efforts. This isn't just a train, it's a statement of ambition, a signal that India is ready to step into the next generation of rail travel. The Vande Bharat is sleek, fast, and engineered for comfort. It comes equipped with GPS-based information systems, automatic doors, modern braking technology, and even bio-vacuum toilets, a level of sophistication unseen in most domestic trains. Think of it as India's version of a supercar on rails, locally designed and built, but pushing the boundaries of speed and technology. These trains are meant to replace aging coaches and offer a faster, safer, and cleaner travel experience. They aren't just about convenience. They're about national pride, engineering prowess, and technological progress. But here's the tension. Even with all these innovations, the Vanda Bharat is not fully independent. Many of its critical components still come from outside India. And this is where the story of the humble train wheel begins to intersect with ambition, reality, and international supply chains. Here's where the story gets interesting. While the Vanda Bharat Express is proudly made in India, the reality is that about 70 to 80% of its critical components are imported. That includes high-speed wheels, which are essential for stability, safety, and performance at speeds of 160 to 200 kilometers per hour. Why does a wheel matter so much? Imagine riding a bicycle with slightly bent rims at 60 miles per hour. Any imperfection becomes dangerous potentially catastrophic. For high-speed trains, even the tiniest defect in a wheel can lead to derailments or system failures. The wheels must be made from ultra-pure steel, forged with extreme precision, and tested to survive millions of stress cycles without cracking. This is where industrial maturity comes in. India has brilliant engineers and massive steel plants, but producing wheels to these exacting specifications isn't just about skill, it's about decades of specialized experience, research, and high-precision infrastructure. Some capabilities simply take time to develop. So, while assembling the train locally shows India's growing manufacturing capabilities, the need to source globally 
exposes a gap between ambition and reality. The Vanda Bharat is a symbol of national pride, but it also reminds us that made in India doesn't always mean fully self-reliant. Initially, India tried to avoid turning to China. Instead, it struck a deal with Ukraine's Inner Pipe, one of the few companies in the world capable of producing high-speed rail wheels that met India's strict specifications. The plan was smart. Get the technology you need, avoid geopolitical complications, and maintain the optics of self-reliance. The deal seemed solid. Ukraine had the expertise, the capacity, and a price that worked for India. But then in February 2022, the world changed overnight. Russia invaded Ukraine, throwing supply chains into chaos. Factories were near war zones, ports closed, and production ground to a halt. Suddenly, wheels India had planned to use for its Vande Bharat trains were no longer available. This crisis wasn't just about missing parts. It was a harsh reminder of how vulnerable India's ambitious infrastructure projects are to global events. A war thousands of kilometers away in Eastern Europe could paralyze train modernization efforts in South Asia. With the Ukraine deal collapsing, India faced a stark choice. Wait indefinitely for domestic production to catch up, or turn to the one country that could deliver at the required scale and speed, China. By 2022, the situation became critical. Brand new Vanda Bharat trains were being assembled, shining examples of Indian engineering, but they had no wheels to sit on. Production lines slowed, delivery schedules slipped, and trains that were supposed to symbolize progress were literally idle on factory tracks. The pressure wasn't just technical, it was political, economic, and social. Government officials were being grilled in parliament. Media outlets ran headlines questioning India's self-reliance, and the public started noticing that trains advertised as fast and modern weren't running at all. Every day of delay meant millions in potential losses, both financially and in public trust. It was a high-stakes scenario. India could either pause its modernization ambitions or make a tough, pragmatic choice to keep the trains moving. In infrastructure projects, delays aren't just inconvenient. They cascade, affecting passengers, local economies, and national goals. This urgency highlighted a simple truth. Even a single missing component, like a wheel, can paralyze a national project. And that brings us to the next piece of the puzzle. Why manufacturing these high-speed wheels is far more complicated than it looks. At first glance, a train wheel might look like a simple metal ring. But for high-speed trains like the Vandabharat Express, these wheels are some of the most technically demanding components in the rail industry. Here's why. These wheels spin at speeds of 160 to 200 kilometers per hour, carrying hundreds of tons of weight. They run over rough terrain, extreme weather, and heavy usage. If even one wheel develops a crack or flaw, the consequences can be catastrophic. Derailments, accidents, and massive damage. Producing these wheels isn't just casting metal. It requires ultra-pure steel, with oxygen levels below 0.00002%, forged with extreme precision, heat-treated carefully, cooled under controlled conditions, and tested using ultrasonic methods to detect any microscopic defects. They need to endure millions of stress cycles without deforming, essentially lasting for years under extreme pressure. Globally, only a handful of countries consistently produce wheels to this standard, China, Germany, Japan, France, and Italy. Even they face their own production challenges. This explains why India, despite having world-class engineers and large steel plants, couldn't instantly produce the wheels domestically. It's not about intelligence or effort. It's about decades of specialized experience and industrial maturity. India didn't just sit back and wait. The government pushed state-owned companies like Rashtriya Ispat Nigam Limited to ramp up production of high-speed wheels. Local firms were tasked with meeting the exacting standards required for the Vande Bharat trains. But reality proved challenging. Some batches failed quality checks, others couldn't be produced at the scale needed, and tiny defects in the microstructure of the steel meant wheels couldn't pass safety standards. Even a wheel that looked perfect to the naked eye could be unsafe at high speed. This wasn't due to a lack of talent or effort. India has brilliant engineers and ambitious industrial plans. The issue was industrial maturity, years, sometimes decades of specialized knowledge and finely tuned manufacturing processes that just cannot be rushed. Producing high-speed rail wheels reliably at scale is something only a few countries in the world have perfected. This section of the story shows a critical lesson. Pragmatism sometimes has to override national pride. Even ambitious make in India,
projects face real-world constraints when speed, quality, and scale collide. After the Ukraine deal collapsed and domestic production couldn't keep up, India faced a difficult choice – delay the rollout of the Vande Bharat trains or turn to the one country that could deliver on time, at scale, and to specification – China. In 2023, India signed a deal with Taiwan Heavy Industry in China to import 39,000 train wheels, even agreeing to pay 1.68% more than what it had offered Ukraine two years earlier. The decision was politically charged. India and China have tense relations with border standoffs, public mistrust, and previous tech bans. Social media and critics quickly pointed out the irony. Trains promoted as make in India were running on Chinese wheels. But this was a calculated compromise. China was the only supplier that could meet India's urgent timeline without sacrificing quality. Delays of even a few months could have stalled production lines, cost millions, and delayed the introduction of hundreds of new trains. China also added strict payment terms, requiring 60% upfront, a sign of caution after past experiences with Indian partners. The deal highlighted a broader truth. Sometimes pragmatism must override pride especially when national infrastructure and momentum are at stake. Japan has long been seen as India's trusted infrastructure partner, known for precision, discipline, and dependable technology. The Mumbai Ahmedabad bullet train project was supposed to be the crown jewel of this partnership. Announced in 2017 with a $12.8 billion near-zero interest loan from Japan, it was expected to be operational by 2023 to 2024, a symbol of next-generation transport and Indo-Japanese friendship. But today, in 2025, not a single train is running, and the new optimistic target is 2028. Costs have ballooned to over $30 billion, more than double the original budget. Delays arose from land acquisition issues, regulatory hurdles, and local opposition, but that wasn't all. Even Japan's supply chain faced problems. In 2023, a major supplier was caught falsifying quality data on railway wheels intended for India's bullet trains. This wasn't just a paperwork problem. It shook trust. If the most reliable partner can slip up, India realized that even safe supply chains carry risk. This lesson underscores a key point. In global infrastructure projects, friendliness or reputation doesn't guarantee performance. Reliability, timing, and technical precision matter far more, and that made the China deal, as politically awkward as it was, start to look like the only practical option. This whole story reveals a critical lesson about modern infrastructure and national strategy. Self-reliance doesn't mean doing everything alone. Sometimes, importing, collaborating, or relying on global partners is the most strategic choice. India's decision to import wheels from China wasn't a failure. It was pragmatic thinking under pressure. The country had to balance speed, quality, and scale. Waiting for domestic production could have stalled the entire Vande Bharat rollout, costing millions and delaying progress for years. Meanwhile, trusted partners like Japan or Ukraine weren't available or reliable under the circumstances. In a way, this is what true self-reliance looks like today. It's not about prideful isolation. It's about knowing when to build internally, when to borrow expertise, and when to buy smartly. Progress depends on making tough, sometimes uncomfortable choices. Choices that prioritize results over rhetoric. This lesson isn't just about wheels or trains. It applies to energy, defense, technology, and nearly every sector where ambition can outpace local capability. India's experience shows that interdependence, when managed wisely, is not a weakness. It's a tool for sustainable growth. Looking at the bigger picture, India's wheel deal with China offers a broader lesson for national development and industrial strategy. It shows that even the world's most ambitious plans can be limited by industrial capacity, global supply chains, and geopolitical shocks. For infrastructure, this means India must invest in building deep, specialized manufacturing capabilities, especially for critical components like high-speed train wheels, advanced electronics, and precision machinery. At the same time, it must maintain strategic global partnerships to ensure progress doesn't stall when local production can't immediately meet demand. For policy and strategy, it highlights the importance of pragmatism over symbolism. Self-reliance is not about rejecting global trade or cooperation. It's about knowing when to build domestically, when to collaborate internationally, and when to make calculated compromises. 
The decision to import wheels may have felt uncomfortable politically, but it kept India's modernization efforts on track, avoided delays, and ensured that the Vanda Bharat Express project continued moving forward. In a rapidly changing, interconnected world, strategic interdependence often enables long-term independence. So let's step back and reflect. A train wheel, a simple everyday object, became a symbol of ambition, vulnerability, and strategic thinking. It exposed the tension between national pride and practical necessity, and revealed how even a country with world-class engineers and massive industrial capacity can face real-world limits. India's choice to import 39,000 wheels from China wasn't about weakness or failure. It was about keeping the Vanda Bharat Express project moving, making calculated compromises, and prioritizing results over rhetoric. It's a reminder that in today's interconnected world, true self-reliance doesn't mean isolation. It means smart interdependence. Now here's the question for you. Can self-reliance coexist with global dependence? Was India right to make this deal with China? Drop your thoughts in the comments. We're building a space to discuss infrastructure, development, and geopolitics in a nuanced way. If this story gave you a new perspective on how nations navigate ambition and reality, like, share, and subscribe. Understanding the why behind decisions like these is more important than ever because the world moves fast, and knowing what drives progress can help us all think bigger. Until next time, remember, even the smallest pieces, like a wheel, can carry the weight of an entire nation's ambition.